The synthesis of ether is going to be the topic of this lesson. Now, in the last lesson we learned how to name ethers, and the next lesson we'll learn the one major reaction of ethers. But in this lesson we're going to review some ways to prepare ethers, including one of them we'll put a name on called the Williamson ether synthesis. Now, if you want to be notified every time I post a lesson, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. All right, so we got three big review ways, and, and really the fourth one we're going to learn here is also review, but uh, like I said, we're going to put a name on it at the end here. So, uh, But first two are a couple of alkene addition reactions. They're both addition of an alcohol, and the first one's acid-catalyzed addition of an alcohol. So in this case, it's going to add an H and an OCH3 if we use methanol, but you could insert you know, pretty much any alcohol you want to use here. Uh, and then you need an acid catalyst, most notably uh, H2SO4. Learn this back in the alkene chapter in all likelihood. We definitely did in my course. So, and in this case, we're going to add an H to the less substitute side. You get the more substitute carbocation, which could rearrange. Well, in this case, it's tertiary. And so we're going to get an OCH3 on the more substitute carbon. So again, H on the less substitute side, OCH3 on the more substitute side, and we've formed an ether in this case. Now, it turns out you can get the same result with no carbocation intermediate, no rearrangements to ever worry about, with alkoxy mercuration demercuration. And in alkoxy mer demercuration, I'm sorry, alkoxy mercuration demercuration, very similar to oxymercuration demercuration, but instead of in that first step using water with mercuric acetate, you're going to use the appropriate alcohol, whatever alcohol you want. In this case, I'm using methanol again. So, and this once again goes Markovnikov, adding an H on the less substitute side and the OCH3 on the more substitute side, and once again we formed an ether. Technically, you can also form them via SN1, although this is my least favorite way, because if you're doing SN1, good chance you're going to have a fair amount of E1 competing with it, so it's not uh, the easiest reaction to get a great yield of, So, but one that's presented in quite a few textbooks. And In this case, your leaving group is going to leave, you're going to form a carbocation. Again, we're doing SN1. So, and then that's where your alcohol is going to come and attack. So just nothing new about this, just straight up SN1. And in the end, a couple steps down the road, your methoxy group would be attached right there. And so in this case, I, I just try to synthesize the same exact ether in three different ways. So, but again, these are all review. All right, so now we'll take a look at what's called the Williamson ether synthesis. And truth is, this is just a, a way to use an SN2 reaction to make an ether. It typically starts with an alcohol, and you're going to deprotonate that alcohol. And most common reagent used is sodium. We went through these kind of uh, back in the alcohol chapter, but technically you could use lithium or potassium or even sodium hydride as well, all of which are going to deprotonate your alcohol, leading uh, hydrogen gas to bubble out of your solution. So, but you're going to form the conjugate base here, which is an alkoxide ion. And technically, you could show the Na+, so sodium gets oxidized in the process, it turns out. So, you could show that as well, but not a big deal here. Uh, but he's a strong nucleophile, and that was the point. And alcohol is a weak nucleophile, but this alkoxide ion, the conjugate base, strong nucleophile, and that's what I need for SN2, you might recall. So, and from here, now that we got the strong nucleophile, now I need something with a good leaving group. That's relatively unhindered for backside attack. And so here I'm going to use a primary halide, but a, a methyl halide or a primary halide work best. Secondary halides don't work so well because uh, E2 ends up being the favored reaction over SN2. And then tertiaries just don't work at all because you can't do SN2 on a tertiary halide. So, but in this case, we're just going to do backside attack, kick off the leaving group. And lo and behold, we have formed an ether here. And so oftentimes when you're presented with a Williamson ether synthesis, you're actually asked to go backwards. And you're supposed to realize that on an ether, if you're doing the Williamson ether synthesis, you can either make either one of those carbon oxygen bonds. And you gotta decide which one is easier to make. Well, it's all about how substituted the carbon is. So this carbon right here is a secondary carbon. This one's a primary carbon. And so if you looked over here and you thought, hey, Chad, that's a tertiary carbon. Well, again, oxygen doesn't count. It's just the number of carbons he's bonded to. So that's a secondary, that's a primary. And you gotta ask, the real question is, which of those would have been better to attack in an SN2 reaction? And it's definitely the less substituted primary carbon just like we did here. And so if you're asked to give the best synthesis for a particular ether via the Williamson ether synthesis, make the less substituted side the alkyl halide, and then the more substituted side the alkoxide that came from the corresponding alcohol. That is the Williamson ether synthesis. 
Now, if you found this lesson helpful, could I ask for a quick favor? And that's simply to like and to share so that other students can see this lesson as well. If you are looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you're looking for practice problem, practice final exams, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com. A free trial is available.